In order to understand assembly language, we need to understand how computers work at the lowest level. Computer systems are mostly based on the structure of von Neumann architecture. It's a nice complex name for a rather simple concept. Developed by my favorite computer scientist, mathematician and all-round brainy pants, John von Neumann, uh, not 80s synth sensation Gary Neumann, uh, although I will fanboy over both of them given the chance, it defines how a basic computer system works. At the lowest level, what a computer is doing is taking a series of instructions in machine code, like this, and using its CPU to follow the instructions, one at a time, as fast as it can. One of the neat features of von Neumann is that the instruction and the stored data are in the same format and the same memory space. So line 2 here might be an instruction and line 5 might be a piece of stored data, but at a glance they look the same. This means you don't need different devices to store programs and the data from them. They can all be stored and run from the same RAM, CPU and secondary storage devices. Another feature of von Neumann is the fetch, decode, execute cycle. And this explains how a line of machine code is processed by the CPU. Fetch identifies and loads the line of machine code that we're currently working on. This is tracked through the program counter, which always points us to the next instruction that we need to go to. The next step is to decode, where we look at the two parts of our line of code to work out what it wants us to do. A machine code instruction is made up of two parts, the opcode, the instruction, and the operand, the data. These two parts are treated separately. First, the CPU looks up what the opcode actually means, and in this case, it's a load instruction. Then, it works out what the operand, the data component, actually means. In this case, it's the number 5. Putting it all together means that the instruction in line 1 boils down to making the CPU load a piece of data from memory location 5. Uh, that's line 5 to you and me. Of course, once we've decoded the meaning of the instruction, we actually have to go and do it. In von Neumann, this is called execute. So, the instruction told us to load from memory location 5. Well, load where? Well, another feature of von Neumann architecture is that anything that's loaded is loaded into a special piece of memory called the accumulator. And it holds whatever we're currently working on, and can only be one piece of data. Load from memory location 5, then, means take the data from line 5 and stick it in the accumulator. Of course, the first part of line 5 is the opcode, and we need the data, the operand, so we only take the second part into the accumulator, which, in this case, is the value 1. With that done, the system is ready to proceed to the next instruction, which it does by starting the fetch, decode, execute cycle once again. In fact, all a computer really does is this fetch, decode, execute loop. And it does it repeatedly and consistently until the power is turned off. Each of these lines of machine code is usually an instruction. And the CPU speed is measured in how many instructions it can do per second. This is the Hertz measurement you see when you buy it. So a modern processor with a 3 GHz clock speed can fetch, decode and execute 3 billion of these instructions per second. That's pretty cool, huh? The only problem with machine code is that it's not very easy for a human with our squishy organic brains to understand. Could you easily remember that load was 10010010? and save was 10010011. It's not very easy, and so, to make machine code easier for humans to write and read, we invented a proxy language called assembly code. Assembly code takes each instruction and converts it into something easier for a human to read. It's a one-to-one -one translation, so one line of machine code is only one line of assembly. And we've done something quite clever. We've replaced the binary opcode, the instruction itself, with a mnemonic. This just means we've replaced it with a word that sort of sounds like the meaning of the instruction. We'll also replace the binary version of the operand, the data part, with a decimal based value, or at least a clearer and easy to read version of the same number. 
So we've got the exact same code, line for line, but we've just written it in a way that a human can read and understand rather than a machine. There is one slight disadvantage though. Now we've put the code in a format that us squishy-brained humans find easier, we've actually made it impossible for the computer itself to understand. If we try and run the assembly code on the CPU directly, it won't know how to actually do anything and we'll just end up confused. What we need to do is run the code through a program called an assembler that converts the mnemonics back into binary opcode and the operands back into their native format. In other words, it automatically converts each line into machine code. The machine code can be run directly on the CPU. Fantastic. So, assembly code allows us mushy-brained humans to write code that speaks directly to the processor, that uses the individual instructions that the CPU uses. All we need to do to get it working is to run it through the assembler and boom, we've got machine code ready to go. If that's all assembly code is, then what do you need to be able to do with it for your practical exam? The exam specification is very clear on this and demands that you're able to design, write, test, and refine an assembly program. We'll come back to those four aspects of assembly code at the end of this video and make sure you know what's expected at each stage. But first, we need to learn all the instructions that you need to be able to remember and use in the exam. It's worth noting that what you're learning is actually a subset of assembly instructions for a thing called the little man computer, which is a simple instruction set used for learning about assembly. Google it if you want, but you only need to learn part of the instruction set for your exam. 